It is very satisfying to understand the intellectual structure of a philosophical problem and to have a philosophical overview of a problem that is not in itself philosophical. Uh, that is very satisfying. But being satisfied intellectually is not the same as being consoled. Being consoled means being at one with something and finding your place of rest there. And that's not something that I do find very easily with philosophy. Now, the philosophers that I've most in, that I owe most to intellectually um, are Kant and Wittgenstein, I suppose, neither of whom I find consoling to read, although I suppose Kant's moral philosophy in the end is sublime. It does give one a vision of what is possible and so has something of that console, consoling power. But uh, that, in Plato too, I mean obviously in the last days of Socrates, the last dialogues about Socrates, you see a, a wonderful image of what philosophy might be mm -hmm. by way of a, a rising, a raising of you above the mortal concerns and a, an irradiation of the soul by a divine light. And that is a, a wonderful vision, but it very rarely comes to you just through philosophy alone. On the other hand, I would hate to be without philosophy because I know that I wouldn't understand many things that I need to understand in order to live, as it were, in friendship with myself. And that task... You're describing it more or less, and this is not the first time, as a kind of therapy. Yes. Mm, it's not just a therapy. Um, because, after all... It means to an end. Uh, mm, philosophy is also a search for the truth about matters which are in which the truth is hidden. It's a hard discipline. What are the answers until now? <coughs> Assembling. What kind of a picture of human beings you have after so many years, so many centuries of philosophy? I mean, are we any closer to any answer? Mm. It's a very good question. Uh, my, I suppose, I suppose I, I would say that, with Spinoza, that the truth of our condition is very difficult to understand, and like everything worthy of knowledge, it's as difficult as it is rare, as he says at the end of the Ethics. Um, we won't. We we achieve understanding anew in every epoch, and it takes the greatest of intellectual and cultural effort to do it. Um, this is what civilization is for, to achieve this self-understanding. But it does seem to be the case that no sooner has it been achieved and it's lost again, uh, and that the, the knowledge that really matters is more easily lost than, than gained. We can gain easily piecemeal knowledge of this and that, um, and build up whole libraries of piecemeal knowledge. But the, um, the conception of the why and what of human existence dawns on people only at the apex of their endeavours. And once it has dawned, it is usually then eclipsed straight away by ignorance. And we are going through a period of eclipse that is quite obvious. We're entering a dark age in which people will know an awful lot of information, but very little coherent, holistic truth. And this has happened before, many times. But the wonderful thing is that it's still possible to gain a vision, to stand on a little peak, not perhaps the peak on which, say, Spinoza stood, or Plato, but nevertheless a peak of one's own, and look across at all this uh, sea of ignorance and confusion and hysteria and smile at it. <laughs>